Find the volume of a cone with radius r, vertical height h. Now, if we need to really sort of look at this in a diagram, so here I have a geogebra diagram where I have a cone. Okay, so this point is 0, 0, and this point here is the height of the cone, so it's h, 0. So we just place the cone on an x, y axis. It's at a slight angle because we're looking at this in 3D. Um, but what we need to do is to take this line from here to here and rotate it around the x-axis. So in order to find the equation of the line, we can use the idea of y is equal to mx. We can use mx, but we don't need to see because it goes through the point 0, 0. We know that this distance here, from here to here, is the same as the radius of the cone. So the coordinates of this point will be h which is the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate would have to be r. So the equation of the line will be the gradient, which is this distance, divided by this distance, so that's going to be r, divided by h, so y is equal to mx, so the gradient is going to be, the, sorry, the equation of the line is going to be y is equal to r over h times x. And what we need to do is integrate this curve. We can just have a quick look at this in 3D if you want to. So we've got 3D glasses and put them on. And have a quick look so you can see in 3D. It obviously looks better in 3D. And we can move it around a little bit. So you can see that actually you do actually have a cone there. If you rotate this line, this line around the X axis, so we can use volumes of revolution to perhaps prove a formula that you were just told was one third pi r squared h. Okay, let's look at the mass of this now. So there's the diagram that I've just draw, uh, drawn. So we need to rotate the line y is equal to r over h x around the x axis using the volume of revolution, so the formula for the volume of revolution is volume is pi between a, integral between a and b of y squared dx. So using this line here, this is going to be, the volume is going to be pi from integral from 0 to h of r over hx all squared dx. So this is going to give me an r squared over h squared. These are just constants, so we can take them out of the integral sign. So we've got pi r squared h squared, the integral from 0 to h of x squared dx. If we integrate x squared, we get x cubed over 3. So we get x cubed over 3, and then we have to put the limits in h and 0. So we've got pi r squared over, and I've taken the 3 out now as well, 3h squared. And putting the first limit in, we get h, h cubed minus 0 cubed. Just writing that out again. Okay, 0 cubed is 0, so we're going to have, be left with pi r squared h cubed over 3h squared. And now we can see that the h squared here will cancel out. And we're got, just going to be left with the formula... We're going to be left with the formula that we all know as one third pi r squared h. Which is the formula that we're all been told at high school.